uh, let's come back uh, so one more the last topic of your chapter that is fuel cells after this we'll be doing corrosion and finish of the chapter and start with the numericals of cold rush law faraday's law as well as conductivity numericals and then with that i think thorough revision of the chapter is done we'll finish off the board papers now in fuel cells when i speak about fuel cells <coughs> Uh, what actually if I have to define fuel cell fuel cell is basically it is a galvanic cell now in this galvanic cell What is the concept the reactants are fed continuously to this till you feed the reactant? There will not be any voltage drop So the reactants are continuously fed and the products are continuously Collected that is your concept. Let us first write what is a fuel cell fuel cell basically is a galvanic cell Galvanic cell in which reactants are continuously fed fed means you uh, introduce the reactants are continuously sent into the tank hydrogen from the cell oxygen from that cell. those are the reactants are continuously fed and products are product this is a product this is a byproduct this is a product products are con are collected continuously means immediately they are collected this is fed that is collected this is fed that is collected so that is the concept now basically who was first designed this when was this designed Beckin was the person who demonstrated this person this cell Beckin has demonstrated in which year in 1959 he has demonstrated this fuel cell where is it for, where, where is it used basically it is used in it was used in Gemini system in Apollo space program let us write that also for the information because they may ask you this one mark also that topic also they will ask you is one mark so it is used in in Gemini system in Apollo space program okay Done. this is the basic information now when I have to see the fuel tank right you have inlet for hydrogen and oxygen both the sides okay there's a voltage also which is shown here now this whole thing <coughs> when I have to see the main concept is the supply or the release of water which is okay I'll tell you the how is it used for for the, uh, the astronauts who have uh, gone to space Done. so here one side hydrogen one side oxygen is fed both the anodic reaction and the cathodic reaction will occur and the byproduct water also is released out now you have a platinum lining platinum coated screen inside the center one is a platinum coated screen which is present and you are, I said the reactants are fed continuously and the products are collected continuously let's see the reactions and understand now I said <coughs> this after learning the definition I have to write the anodic reaction and cathodic reaction always anode oxidation occurs then so we will write half cell reactions first anodic or anodic reaction anode reaction where oxidation occurs loss of electrons that is always the concept now anode what is happening <coughs> here first thing look here this is your hydrogen isn't it now hydrogen how many am i going to take i'm going to take two hydrogens two twos are four isn't it so what do i get i get four h plus plus how many electrons uh, when I see there are this is 2 and 2 to the 4 so 4 H plus means how many electrons for this one hydrogen one electron two hydrogens two electrons so two electrons now cathodic reaction cathodic reaction reduction occurs and gain of electrons now at the cathode this is your thing oxygen oxygen is going to pick up that thing it's going to pick up these two electrons along with the protons plus H plus gives us just see here proton is also there why did it pick why did it pick up proton because you need water that is the main concept isn't it water is a byproduct done there are four protons here right so let us write H so water so already there are four that means two two twos are four four h plus so oxygen this one see here oxygens are two two oxygens four protons means two twos are four water molecule you've got now let us write the overall reaction two electrons two electron gets cancelled yeah uh, if i have to write four protons this protons gets cancelled what am i left with i'm left with 
overall reaction overall reaction now 2 h2o h2 plus o2 gives me 2 h2o 2 2s are 4 2 2s are 4 2 oxygens 2 oxygens we have one more uh, reaction to write so as of now just see let's come back and do the next reaction right now, now let's come back and see one more set of reaction so basically in hydrogen oxygen fuel cell what did they do they i said i've drawn a diagram here they're going to feed hydrogen and oxygen bubbles of hydrogen and oxygen like both are they bubbled inside the tank in the center you have uh, an aqueous or concentrated uh, aqueous solution of sodium hydroxide that is electrolyte concentrated we take now what actually is the reaction so when i have to take just see here now what do we write hydrogen and oxygen is bubbled into the tank continuously and what is present and it combines with into the tank that's the thing and you have concentrated uh, solution concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide which acts as an electrolyte that is fed is placed at the center placed at the center now see how am i going to write the reaction first i have to write anodic reaction done now initially when you are writing the reactions remember carefully and practice it more number of times this is hydrogen which is acting as an anode oxygen which is acting as a cathode so pick up this hydrogen while taking only try to take two moles of hydrogen this is your gaseous form now <coughs> i said concentrated solution sodium hydroxide try now this breaks up into na plus plus oh minus because we need water as a product isn't it it has to satisfy is that is used it's mixed up for drinking purposes for the astronauts then so when you're taking here i'm going to take four moles of oh minus done why because this is two two so four h plus this is four oh minus simple now what do i get when i combine both i get water molecule see how many how many are here four hydrogens here four hydrogens here eight are there so what should i write here four twos are eight so in the in the process how many electrons got transacted yes from here two twos are four four <coughs> four electrons are getting transacted. done let's come back to the cathodic reaction in the cathodic reaction what do i have i have oxygen try to take that oxygen simple now again the same thing four electrons are accepted by oxygen now i need to get water molecule water isn't it i already said that is the main thing which is used for which is combined with for digging purposes now the earlier reaction i've shown <clears throat> i have picked up two water molecules here i'll tell you why two water molecules so that i compensate the whole thing now observe carefully what do i get oxygen plus four electrons from here two water molecules done final product when i get this is my accepting four electrons this gets converted into two twos of four oh minus done let us write the state this is gaseous state this is your aqua state this is liquid gaseous state liquid aqueous because you get ions in aqueous state only now let's write the final overall reaction so when i see four electrons four electrons get cancelled 4 oh 4 oh minus gets cancelled that is the reason i've uh, taken two water molecules on this side now <clears throat> what are we left with we are left with two hydrogen gas plus oxygen gas gives me now look here this two water molecules and four water molecules in that they get cancelled i'm left with two water molecules right so on the lhs i don't have anything else so what do you have here two water molecules that is a liquid now let's see whether it is balanced or not <coughs> two to the four hydrogens two to the four hydrogens oxygen is two oxygen is two so this is the overall reaction of fuel cell you have to write the initial one and try to write the final one also let's come back and see the advantages of fuel cell and disadvantages also right uh, now let us come back and finish off your fuel cell with advantages and disadvantages now uh, when i speak about the fuel cell basically the fuel cell uh, this in uh, uh, the width of that is only 0.5 mm we are studying it in a larger scale so very small 0.5 mm just assume it now when i have to speak about the advantages of fuel cell first important thing i said fuel cell is basically a galvanic cell 
now you have to feed the electrolytes continuously at the same time you need to collect the products also continuously so when both the things are happening continuously so there is no drop in the voltage it is always maintained like that only so the first important thing no drop in voltage so when i calculate the cell reaction which i already got first reaction e not cell i get which is equal to 1.229 volts this is what is a voltage which i get now <coughs> next important this is highly efficient i said it is a type of gal galvanic cell it is also galvanic cell but when i compare with the conventional galvanic cells fuel cell is highly efficient in nature highly efficient right i can drag or pull its efficiency if i add under certain conditions its efficiency can be increased from 70 percent to 95 percent that i can pull its efficiency so so that because i am feeding it continuously isn't it done and most important thing <coughs> no pollution it does not release any pollution no pollution or no pollutants no pollutants are released why are released what is a byproduct here the byproduct in the reaction is only water i got water as a product so there's no pollutant release isn't there hydrogen oxygen both are bubbled together and finally i get a product of water so hence no pollution only water is a byproduct it's a product that so next disadvantages so when i have to speak about the disadvantages i said in the fuel cell in the center you have a concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide i said yes <coughs> that particular sodium hydroxide the electrolyte is electrolyte is highly corrosive you know sodium hydroxide is corrosive isn't it highly corrosive that is one disadvantage next other disadvantage is the very costly isn't it compared to the others okay they are costly done and next important concept is what do they do they are going to take see hydrogen and oxygen as it in the form of gaseous state but to, to carry them to the higher altitudes both hydrogen and oxygen they are liquefied where are they placed they are liquefied and kept what to what extent below the boiling point they are going to liquefy it below the boiling point and carry it in, in, in a cylinder called cryogenic cylinders they are going to seal the whole cylinder and place it or liquefy the gas and then carry it so liquefied below their boiling point so where are they placed they are going to and placed in insulated cryogenic cylinders so now what happens maintenance of these cylinders is very very costly and that's the reason we said it's costly so maintenance would be maintenance is costly a uh, cost effective or costly and the next important thing so we have we spoke about the electrolyte we spoke about its uh, uh, cylinder this in a cryogenic cylinder and what else can we write um, suppose if i have to uh, speak or the, the normal pollutants okay let's i think i've covered boiling point also i've written because i'm concentrating what what concepts will the examiner ask you i've written this okay costly also i've written corrosive also i've written done yeah with this you can finish off your advantages as well as disadvantages